Hello beautiful, welcome back to Nat's Beautiful Life. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my thoughts on this book, uh, The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. Uh, this is our book club book of the month for May and we had our book club like personal like in-person meeting <laughs> um, a little late this um, month so that's why this is coming up late. But uh, if you're new to this channel, hello, my name is Natasha. I do videos mostly on books, but also on art journaling, uh, media, anything I want to do a video about because, hey, why not? Um, we do have a book club. It is called the Girls Night Out Book Club. If you're in the Triangle area of North Carolina, so Raleigh, Cary, Wake Forest, Durham, um, more on the North Raleigh, Durham side is where we most of the time meet. But anyone is welcome. And um, we do meet in person, but for those of you who are all over the world, because truly I see where you live in my dem um, demographic thing, whatever, um, the analytics, there we go. Um, you are welcome to be a part as well through these book chats. You can comment in the comments. Um, if you're going to put a spoiler, just write spoiler and then write what you want to write. You can also join the Facebook group um, that is linked down below. Be sure to answer all three questions that they ask you or you won't get in. Um, and you're welcome to discuss with all of us the book there as well. Without any further ado, I'm going to kind of get in the book today. I'm um, just trying to have a chill day and do some chill videos. I've already been to the plant nursery, got tons of plants. I'm so ready to dig in the dirt and um, just have a good time with that. I have a video that's mostly edited and ready to post, hopefully today. Um, but yeah, <laughs> let's get into The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. So this is my very first Kristen Hanna book. And I actually got this one because it was the book of the month, which is a, a subscription service where you get a book every month. I'm not sponsored. It's just I do have that service. Um, and if you are BFF, then you get them for free. So I got the book of the year. So it was the book of the month, book of the year. And so I got it for free. Um, I really was not sure about going into this because again there is the decibel it's the great depression it's a lot of things like that going on so it sounds very depressing very like sad and all of that but this was an amazing book and I found myself really wanting to tear into it every day and I couldn't wait to get home or go to lunch and, you know, pull it open and get in there. I really enjoyed it. Um, so we're going to talk about just the themes of the book and some things that happen. But I will give you a warning and tell you when we're going into spoiler territory so that you can click out, finish the book, and then come back for the spoilers. Be sure you do that. There's a lot to unpack in this book, but I'm going to go pretty rapid fire, I hope. Who knows but I gave this five stars I absolutely adored it uh, in the book club people um, the people who got started reading it loved it I had one girl who read maybe half of it and she quit and it wasn't necessarily the book it was because she had read so many Kristen Hanna books lately through other book clubs that she was just tired of the subject matter because uh, apparently I guess Kristen Hanna writes a lot of these like depressing time types of books. So let's go through. First of all, we have our main character. Um, her name is Elsa. So Elsa is a part of a very well-to-do family. We start um, before the Great Depression. We start when they live in Texas. She's got um, where everything is plentiful. You know, they call wheat the golden crop because um, everything's very prosperous, the town is prosperous, things like that. So her family considers her not to be the prettiest, which is strange. She was, uh, when we, we'll get to that, but um, her sisters were considered beautiful and pretty and they married them off. And Elsa, when she was very young, was sick, but then she got better, but they always treated her like she was sick and wouldn't let her do anything, but she read a lot. Beware of the red, the well-read woman. There we go. Um, 
So she had like fantasies of what she wanted her life to be like, what she wanted to do, and all this stuff. But her family just kind of kept her down and really didn't think well of her. Now, when she she's described, described, I don't know why I have trouble speaking when I film, but I do. <laughs> um, she, when she's described, I feel like in today's day and age, she's blonde, she's tall, she's thin. I feel like she'd be like a supermodel. And apparently she's very tall, like almost six feet tall. Again, she would be like a supermodel in today's world, but apparently that was not attractive back then. They wanted everyone, and people, I don't think a lot of people were that tall, that especially in the US or the Texas area at that time. For some reason, people were smaller. But um, anyway, uh, her family just kind of saw her as the black sheep, the outcast. And she stayed in a room and she read a lot of books. Well, one night she decides she's going to make herself be like the heroines in her books. And she gets herself, she cuts her hair because it's like the 20s. So she does a little flapper style. She has a flapper dress that she made and she goes out. They will not let her into the speakeasy because the person who answers the door knows who she is and is like, your father would kill me. So she's just like, she's very sad and she's walking along the road and stuff and she meets this man and they agree to meet in the evening and things ensue. So she gets pregnant and her father finds out who the dad is and he puts her in the car, disowns her, and basically takes her to where he is and his family and drops her off. So there's that. Um, it's actually probably one of the best things that could ever happen to her because um, this, the father of her child, who is not the best person, his parents are wonderful and they come to love her as if she were their own. They love their grandchildren, and um, it just turns out to be a very heartwarming found family type of thing. And then we have the dust storms that start. Um, the dust storms, I, I knew that they happened, and I knew that you had no warning and all that, but I didn't realize how frequently they happened, like, and how long they could last. And this book really goes into the storms themselves and the earth and also it, it touches on why some of it happened as far as the crops failing and things like that they had to learn how to be different with their agriculture and planting and things like that um but a lot of the help they wanted from the government they weren't getting and so a lot of people were moving west. Um, a lot of flyers were showing up. They were like, come to California, there's jobs, things like that. Because a lot of the things in her town were dying because people weren't able to make money, their crops were dying, and the dust storms were killing people because they were literally full of dirt. And it's so descriptive how um, the dust storms would come, what they would do to hide from them, and then what they'd have to do to be able to open their eyes in the morning without having dirt in their eyes and when you they would cry like the kids would cry there would be like sand and stuff coming out of their um eyes and then it was just a mess so a lot of people are leaving and a lot of people are staying and especially the grandparents were like this is our land and they were very connected to it even in a spiritual kind of way and um it was heartwarming but at the same time you're like wow <laughs> But I do understand what they did. They they wanted to stay and they wanted to try some of the new ways of setting things up for when it was time uh, to when the dust storms ended. Anyway, no rain, no nothing. Everything's drying up. The ground itself is cracking from lack of moisture. Um, animals, people, everyone's full of sand. Like in their their bodies, they're taking it in as well. So all of that happening and then her son gets very sick from the sand sickness um and so they're like we you, the doctor's like you have to get him out of texas you've got to get him out of this area so they decide to go to california so it's basically her and her two children loretta and um oh oh what's his name her son's name they called him aunt i think it's anthony 
if it's not, I'll put it on the screen, but they called him Ant. So Ant and Laredo, so, or Laredo, sorry. Um, so they go to California, so you follow along on their journey. But along their journey, you also see, like, what they see that she's describing, some of the things she sees on her way, and the different types of people, and the different types of places, and things like that. So they finally get to California and find out that there's not a lot of jobs for everybody and in fact the Californians have kind of turned on all the people coming from outside to work in the fields. Um, it's kind of funny when you when you're reading this you realize when first people first came from the east to the west those first um, migrants who they're migrant workers that moved over were accepted and were able to start new lives in California and things like that but there were so many and it was like they were coming from everywhere Texas um, Oklahoma all the middle Midwest areas that were being affected by the Dust Bowl and even parts of South Carolina Georgia things like that they were all making their way to California because they were advertising to come to California so people were just coming um, because they were losing their land, their stuff was being foreclosed on, all of these types of things are happening so they're trying to go where the jobs are, they want to work. But that, there's so many people there trying to get work that there's not enough work for everyone. So they wind up in like a little shanty um, area for the first night and they're like, we're only going to be here for one night and I'm going to find a job and all of that. And then she kind of gets a, a rude awakening the first night when she gets there and um, or the first day she gets there and they she goes and gets a job for the day and finds that people look at her as if she's dirty or um, basically she's a foreigner to them and they're going to be prejudiced against the foreigner they call them Okies even though she's from Texas she keeps saying I'm, I'm from Texas but it's like a blanket uh, what's the word I'm looking for a blanket um, just slander term that they use towards people who have migrated to California for work and she's like I am an American I'm I'm just like you um, one of you and and but they she's like being talked down to by these people like tells the kid the daughter like don't get near her they carry diseases and all of this stuff and then she works all day long and makes 40 cents and then learns that it's not going to be as easy as they advertised it to be. And then we go from there. Again, these are hard topics and they are depressing topics and it sounds awfully sad and it is, but keep in mind there are relationships between not only the mother and those grandparents and then when she moves along, the mother and the children and there's some, um, because Loretta is kind of coming into her teen years and blames mom for everything, loved dad so much, um, and is, you know, upset about um, not having dad there and blames everything on Loretta and all of that. Um, on Elsa, excuse me. Loretta blames everything on Elsa, like it's all her fault. And she's not in her own reality check yet because she's a child. Um, but then they meet some friends in this little shanty town and what's cool and what is very heartwarming about this is none of these people really have anything. They're living in tents and cars and just held together stick structures, but they all share whatever they have. Whatever I have that you need, you can have. Whatever you have that I need, they freely give to you. And this family had like a lot of children and then Loretta has her too. And they just, it's just heartwarming how they banded together and um, were able to understand each other's struggles because the same thing that happened to Elsa and her family happened to this family. Um, so then we kind of move on from there. Um, within the story, there are also what they call the communists, um, and they are a communist party that have come from a like, Hollywood type area 
to this area of um, California and um, basically are trying to unionize the workers to get the um, workers paid more because they're seeing them as throwaway workers. Like if you don't work as hard as I want you to for as little as I'm gonna pay you, that's okay. There are thousands more that will do it because they are so desperate. And so they're trying to get the workers unionized so that they get paid a fair wage. And they consider them, like I said, communists and they, this one man and this whole group and um, there's a whole like, kind of side plot going on with that. So there's not just this family situation. We've also got this bigger kind of political type thing, but it doesn't seem that way. It seems very personal because you see these struggles and you know what's happening isn't right and you're like, wanting to fight for this and so Loretta kind of listens to this guy and kind of gets involved in the group and her mom is constantly like nope goes and gets her nope we're not doing that you don't want to get in trouble because this man gets beat up all the time he gets arrested all the time because he's really you know he's fighting for the workers but you know whatever <laughs> so um, they just happen to be the communists that are trying to start the unions it's not that unionizing is necessarily communist. It's just, that's what they're doing. Um, but it, it, it was for, to protect the, the workers. And so there's a side character of Jack, who is the leader of this particular group and all the things he's doing to help the workers. And um, some things happen and um, he turns out to be a pretty decent guy. Um, so that's all I'm going to say up to this point. I just want to let you guys know, if you haven't read the book yet, it's worth it. Uh, again, I don't know that I'm describing this book, um, how heartfelt it is, because you fall in love with these characters. There are so many likable characters and side characters, and there are parts that will make you extremely angry. But all in all, a very good book. I'm so glad I read it. I am looking forward to another Kristen Hanna uh, soon the writing flows so well like I'm reading a book that's kind of takes place in a similar type of time and the readings a the reading the writings a little bit more choppy so even though I'm getting to that point in that book where it's getting better because it's starting to flow with the story the writing is not as beautiful as this writing in here this writing in this book just flows so if you haven't read the book click out come back when you have because I'm gonna start Boiling it, <laughs> right? So, when we get past our area where um, Jack and Loretta, not Loretta, <laughs> Elsa, I keep getting their names mixed up, um, become, become friends and they see and understand everything, um, and the flood happens and they lose everything, and I am just, like, at this point, like, please just go home. I know there's dust storms and everything, but at least people won't treat you like crap because everybody feels like crap. And I'm just like, can you get home? Can you help her get home? You know, that's what I'm thinking. But he's like, we're going to unionize. We're going to get together. And when she gets to the company store, you know, the company camp, and she's working in the camp. And when she realizes that they don't take cash, she can only work off her debts to them by working. It reminded me of that song. I know someone else orig originally um, recorded it, but I knew Johnny Cash did it. It was like, you load 15 tons and what do you get? I never understood that line that said he owed his soul to the company store. I get it now. I get it what she's saying. Um, she's like, you can never ever work this off. And it's such a horrible uh, setup. It's just a horrible way to treat people that owner of that company just constantly putting people in debt and making them think he's doing them a favor when truly he owns them forever unless they run away like i didn't quite get it like he held that all that over their head and treated them like garbage and it was terrible he basically turned them to a type of slave obviously not as like an ownership thing but a type of slave where they didn't have any choice. Like everything that they had in their lives were like 
on this owner. They were due to him and, and all of that, and they couldn't do anything without, you know, him. Um, unless they ran away, because I don't, I, one thing I didn't understand is like, if they did leave because they were tired of working, would he try to find them to get his money or something? I don't, I didn't quite understand that part. Like, I know you're in debt and you could only work it off by working, but what if you quit working and you went away and you still have this debt with this company? Like, would that haunt you? Or would he just be like, oh well, it's just a scheme I've got going, so here's the next one, you know. I don't know. <laughs> but um, the, the whole structure of that, I get how... I get how that would work and we come such a strong, if, if you're an immoral person who's having this company, I, I get why you would do that. But it was so immoral and so horrible that you set it up where these people can't possibly ever pay off their debts, ever, because they're constantly accruing. It's terrible. Um, but I, it, the way that it explained that way that system worked, um, I had never truly understood it before the way um, they, it was explained. Um, so I really, I enjoyed learning about that so that, but oh my word, it's just, it's just so much, y'all, so much. Um, and then when she and Jack become closer and he tells her that she's beautiful and it's the first time anyone's ever told her she was beautiful, um, I just thought that was heartfelt. Also, if we back up when Laredo was her birthday and she took her to get her hair done and all of that, that was so heartwarming. I love that so much. And also when uh, Elsa is trying to get the aspirin for her friend who's got the fever and goes into the hospital with her baseball bat, that was a good time for me. I was like, way to go, Elsa. Way to, I mean, literally, what else could she do? These other people were expecting these people like were like soulless and had no... How can you look at another human being and be like, this is a hospital, but you can't have something as simple as aspirin because of where you come from and you smell? Like, <sighs> that is... I'm a healthcare worker, and we deal with some people... Like, the only way that we would probably cut you off from not being a patient anymore is if you mistreat the staff. We also will discontinue your um, patronage with us, your treatment with us, if you don't follow your treatment plan. Then there's nothing we can do to help you. Then you'll have to go somewhere else because you're not doing it anyway. Um, those type of things. But if you're poor or you can't pay or something, we work with you because that's our job as providers of health care. So to to be to think in this way that these people will be turned down just because of where they're from. And again, people are not under like she's like, I am an American just like you. It's not that I don't want to work. It's not that I don't know how to bathe. It's like I'm just like you. You just happen to be you know, I'm, you know, especially when they become an actual resident, they've been there long enough, I'm a resident of California too, you know, kind of thing. So that was just so frustrating to me. And the fact that if you notice, it just keeps, history just keeps repeating itself. It's so, so, so sad. Um, but then, uh, like I said, when Elsa and Jack um, fall in love and you're like, oh, yay, I hope we, you know, <laughs> move on from here and we can get out of the store and we can live our lives and all of that and then she dies <laughs> she dies and i'm like she's got to be some sort of martyr now and but the way that lareda is just like i can't i can't believe this you know you're the strongest one of i've ever known mom and i love you and, you know she had already started to kind of turn and see that but then that really forced it upon her and um, it was just very heart wrenching and heart warming, I think, because um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, the love within that family it was always there, even when you know teenage years and stuff broke it out. You know, 
it, there, it was always there in that respect. And Ants, I, I know I haven't talked a lot about the little brother a lot, but he is like the best. All he's ever known is poor. Um, even he was born after the dust storm started, after the Great Depression started. So he, all he'd ever known was what they, what they were living. And uh, when they went to California, it was just like an adventure for him. So um, his comic relief and his positive attitude and all of this was refreshing and sweet. Um, but I felt bad when they he had to go into the fields to work and she knew um, they were picking cotton. So cotton is their, their big crop. Um, if you don't know about cotton, it does grow from the ground. <laughs> and I say that because um, I'm from North Carolina and I'm from more of the coast area and we have a lot of cotton there. And it looks like the middle of summer and snow on the ground. And I'm from a, like a military area. So people who are like from New York or uh, other urban areas where they don't grow such things would literally jump out of the car almost, make you pull over so they could go into a, a cotton field and pick a thing of cotton and look at it because some of them had no idea that it grew on the ground like that. And so it does grow out in little stalks, but you have to pull the cotton obviously off the stalk. But cotton has burrs and prickly things in them. So if you're not careful, and even if you are careful, those things will cut you and just poke you and you'll be bloody before it's over with. So um, she was thinking about that in her head, like he's got to learn just like we all had to, how to pick cotton without hurting himself. So he's gonna get hurt the first time. And it was just kind of like, she's like, but I have no choice. And I just, I felt for her then. Um, but when they got home, I was so excited when they decided, she's like, Jack, just take me home. You know, when Lorraine is like, take me and Aunt home. And, um, you know, the grandparents were there to, to accept her. And, um, you know, the end of the book when she goes to college, it's four years later, things are doing better, they're growing a crop. And she's like saying goodbye to her mom's grave. She takes, cause she wants um, her mother to be buried in Texas and all that stuff. So, um, very heartwarming, sweet book. Even in the, admit, the midst of all of this tragedy and these hard things, I just thought it was amazing. The, the optimism, the hard work, and the determination that went into these people. So, um, The Four Winds. Have you read it? That's upside down. Have you read it? What did you think? And uh, let me know in the comments below. If you want to head to the Facebook page and start talking there, we've already had our meetup. So if people get spoiled, it's their own fault. Um, I, I absolutely adored this book and I adored the writing. And it was a book that it had been a while since I had a book where it was like trying to get home to read it and really looking forward to breaking into it and just enjoying the ride with the book. And that's certainly one that did it for me. Okay. I have babbled on enough. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you very soon. Have a great day, gorgeous.